Hey, so welcome back to part two of the Doom 3 editor. In this video, we're going to do a little bit more of an overview of the actual editor. We're going to take a look at the importance of sealing our maps. Then we're going to look at how we arm our player at game start. And then we're going to talk a little bit about textures and how to apply them to our brushes. Now, I would strongly recommend watching uh, part one since this series is going to build sequentially. And if you kind of jump into the middle, you are going to miss vital uh, information. So I'd strongly recommend to watch the series in sequence. And that'll make sure that uh, the information flow uh, is good and you're understanding what we're talking about in subsequent videos. Now, in the first video, what we talked about is when the game ships, to get into the console from the game, it's a three-stroke affair, and you have to hit Control Alt to Title. And I showed you a way how to change that to just the title key through the command line. But the way I showed you, fortunately, it nulls out every time you close Doom 3. So in other words, you have to keep typing it every time you start a new editor session. And there is actually a better way to do it, and I'm going to show you that just right now. Now this assumes that you've purchased uh, your Doom 3 through Steam, and how to change that is quite simple. So what we do is we go into our Steam app and just give it a second to open. Then we want to go into our library and our games and we want to find our game which in this case is Doom 3 and what we want to do is right click and then we want to go down here to properties and then what we want to look for is a set launch, sorry, set launch options and we want to pop that open and what we're going to put in here is a uh, command line which will save us a lot of time in the future and I'm just going to show you that real quick and I'll show you how that works. So what we're going to type in here is plus set space com underscore allow console space one and we're going to hit OK and basically what that's going to do for us now is we never have to type that in again basically so if we go into our game Doom 3 and don't forget we want to run it in Windows mode if we want to mess with the editor and we're going to bring up the command line and all we have to do now is hit title key so we don't have to keep pressing control alt title so that's a little way of getting around that and uh, it's quite handy actually and this is permanent now we can always go back and delete that if we don't you know, if we actually want to go back and press three keys every time so let's pop into the editor and let's get this sh merriment and mirth on the way here so there's our editor now the first thing we want to do here is we want to go up here into preferences you could hit uh, the keystroke P and as we can see uh, let's see here we want to go to projects no, not project settings no what we want to do I'm sorry we want to go into edit and we want to hit preferences and again if you look it always gives you the hotkey so preferences so let's go in there so a couple things we want to look for in here uh, it does ship with this auto save every five minutes on now if you're kind of paranoid and you don't remember to save your map I mean if you get in here you get engrossed in your work you work for a couple hours there's a power router or something there's a potential of losing your work so if you're paranoid about that just make sure that that's set uh, five minutes to me is a little excessive you know when you're working and you get that save pop up it's a little disconcerting uh, so you can change that to whatever time you want I I actually take it off because I'm a saver I never forget to save my map so I just take that right off now the other thing is too if you try to escape out of your map or close the editor without saving it will tell you uh, to save your map so that's a bit of a bit of a assurance there the other thing I like to look at uh, is this here thing where are we here um, 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 paint size info now I like to have that clicked on now it might be clicked off. Now I'll show you if you have it clicked off what happens. When you go into your XYZ window and you draw a brush, you can see that there's no brush data there. Now you can look down here and that tells you the brush size, but I don't like looking back and forth. So what I like doing is setting up that preference and I'll show you what it does here. So we go into edit, well let's just press the hotkey. So we'll go into P and then here uh, when we have our paint sizing info if we click that on and hit OK when we draw our brush we can see that it gives us these numbers and that's very handy so I like to have that on so once again you know in your preferences P key you want to make sure that that paint sizing info is on so that covers that now uh, basically an overview of the editor I mean it does resemble any kind of Windows based program you've got your commands up here of course save edit everything else you've also got icons here that you can click for the various functions now again I, I mean I could go through each and every function and talk about it but I you know informative yes but I think that's going to be kind of dry for a video rather I'd like to start building and then that will eventually touch on all the points and we could discuss them a little bit further as we go 
So let's start here in the XYZ window. This is probably where you're going to do most of your work. And what we're going to just start off with is just a brush, just so we have something to look at. So let's just go into our media file real quick and select our cock um, texture. So it's in common, and we're going to just hit cock. We're going to draw a brush. So to draw a brush, basically what you do, put your cursor where you want the brush to start. You left mouse click, click drag, and then you draw out a brush. Then what we want to do is we want to go to a different perspective and just give it some height. Now, uh, as you can see, I'm going to the different views, X, Y, Z, which is top, front, and side view. And to do that, you just hit Control Tab, and then we can flip around to different ways. So that's kind of handy. So to uh, deselect a brush is just Escape. To select it, you have to hit Shift Left Mouse. As you can see, if you want to move it around, just click anywhere inside it, and we can move it around. If you want to adjust the different sizes, we just go to the side that we want to adjust. We can hit left mouse button and drag, and then we could just resize that. And of course, we can do that in any perspective. So that's that. Now, one thing we didn't do, which I always say we, we should be doing, is let's start off with more of a uh, coarse grid size. So let's just select that and get rid of that for now. So basically, when you open the editor, you can hit the number key 5, which is grid 16, or you can come up here and go grid. Just make sure 16 is selected. You can work in any grid you want, but honestly, I'm, I'm just giving you a bit of advice. Start with 16 just to start with. And then secondly, make sure you're snapped to grid. So let's draw us another. Uh, just a quick box or a brush here just so we have something to look at. Now, um, to move around the XYZ window, you just left mouse button and hold, and then you move the mouse around, and then you can sort of move this around. So that's kind of handy as well. Now, the other thing you're going to see here is this Z thing, and that's just your origin. It's kind of arbitrary, and it should be sitting at 0, 0, 0. And you'll find if you want to move it, you just put your cursor wherever you want to, let's say over here. And then if you hit Shift Left Mouse button, that'll move the origin. Uh, if you move it by accident, you know, it should be at 0, 0. Or if you want a custom setting, you can move it anywhere you want. But let's go to 0, 0, 0. So Shift Middle Mouse button, bada bing, and there that is. Now, the other thing you'll notice is this little diamond doohickey with this kind of field of view thing. And that is our camera. And you can see by using the... Um, uh, the arrow keys, I'm just using left and right here, it rotates the camera. And if you look in the render window there to the left, you can see we can actually see kind of a real-time render of that brush that we just built. And you move that camera around by hitting uh, the two up, down arrow keys, which is forward and backwards, depending on what uh, perspective you're in in your XYZ window. If you want to go uh, sort of um, uh, you know pan around, you can hit the uh, arrow keys side to side, so that pans us around. And again, it depends uh, what perspective we're in. So if we're in our front view and we want to go up and down, we can hit our D and C key. And then finally, we can hit our A and X key, which again kind of does a, t a tilt up and down. And this will make a bit more sense in the render window, which we'll just get to in a second. <clears throat> now, the other thing we want to do if we're in our top view, let's say we have a very, very big map and we want to get our camera way over here. Well, we can use our arrow keys and we can move over there, but it takes forever. Whereas we can jump with our camera view by simply hitting control left mouse button and we kind of jump. So that's kind of handy. So we can jump over here, back here, bing. There we go. So there's some of the basic um, commands on the XYZ window. Best thing to do is to get in here and just sort of move around, try it, put a brush in. Uh, at first, it's going to be rather frustrating. It's like riding a bicycle. But in no time at all, you kind of get the muscle memory. And then you can kind of move around these windows in a much more efficient manner. So now let's talk about this render window. So basically, this is a real-time 3D render window. It's not really rendering right now. It's just giving us a very sort of basic graphic representation of it. In this window, we can actually do a real-time render, just kind of a snapshot of a single frame, uh, just by hitting F3 and F4. <clears throat> but since we don't have any lights or entities or anything, that's not going to really show us anything. If we hit it, it's just going to be black. But I'll show you later on, once we get into a map, how that render window works. But the other good thing to know about this is you can select things from the render window. So again, shift, left mouse button, and you can see that the entity turns red, and that is we have it selected. And it also is selected on our XYZ window. 
To get around this render window, you can do it a couple of ways. You can do it with your mouse. And if you go, uh, let's see here, left mouse, and you sort of move the mouse around, you can move around this 3D window. I, I, it's okay. I like to do it slightly differently. You can move around the window as well with your arrow keys. So if you go left to right, that's, uh, let's see here, that's pan. If you hit up, down, it's forward and backwards. Again, you know, depending on what perspective you're in. Uh, you can use your uh, comma and plus keys, and that is a way to move left and right. You can hit your D and C keys, which is up and down. And finally, you can hear, uh, hit your A and Z keys, which is tilt up and down. So again, a little bit confusing, but once you kind of get in there and you try it for yourself, in no time at all, you'll be zinging around the map uh, just based on muscle memory. So that's that. Now finally, we're going to look at our console window. I'm sorry, not finally. we got one other one we'll look at real quick. And that's this tiny little guy here, this Z. I don't use it a lot, but now and again, it does come in handy. And that's locked into your Z perspective, so your height, if you will. And and you'll find now and again it's handy. We won't use it a lot, but let's not leave him out because he's going to feel lonely. Well, whatever. Okay, and finally we have this console window. We talked a little bit about, uh, it's a four-function window basically. And if we hit console, as we talked about, this is a good place to see where errors are happening. Once you compile, you can check to make sure there are no errors. Very handy if we're doing something wrong. Normally it tells us what we're doing wrong. We saw that in the first video. So pay attention to this window. Very, very important. Uh, we already looked at the media tab, and this is where we get at our textures. Um, not the most efficient way, but if we don't have any textures loaded, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Uh, this is uh, the only way to get at the textures. Now once you've loaded textures into your map, if we go to textures, it shows us basically the ones that we have already in our map. So that's very handy to have. Uh, so that is if, for example, we want to uh, draw another brush, well it's going to put it on there, but say this brush has no texture on, if we just click on that it's going to apply the texture. So basically it just kind of boils down to only the textures we're using, which is kind of handy. So let's get rid of that guy. Alright, done. Uh, the other thing that this console does is this entity window, which is very important. It only works if we have entities. It doesn't show you anything if you have a brush. So if we go back to our XYZ in the top view and we just uh, left click, we bring up this menu. If we put in a any kind of entity, and let's have a look at a trigger here real quick, and this is all in alphabetical order, so we'll just scroll down here to a trigger, and we're going to find a trigger relay, and we're going to put that in our map, so let's just zoom in a little bit, and here we can see the trigger relay. So if we click on that trigger relay, and you'll notice whenever you have something selected, it turns red. And the only exception is the info player start. It's red all the time, so just be aware of that. But when we select something in the XYZ window, and uh, it shows up in the render window as well, it does turn red. And we can see it's selected here, and it's turning red. Now this entity um, window basically gives us information on this entity. And actually, if we look at the usage and we read it, it kind of tells us what that entity does. So that's kind of handy when we're learning what these things do. Also a really important feature down here is you can put in various key values and we'll see this when we arm our player uh, that this is a very powerful interface. We don't have to write code or anything like that. They're just simple key values that we put in here and it allows us to give our entities certain attributes. And again we'll look at that a little bit later in this video. Also in this uh, entity explorer if you will or window, uh, and once we put in an entity we can change its orientation. So this is good for example if we have a player or a model or something and want to face a certain way we can do that here or control it up down this stuff's a little bit more advanced and we'll get into this later but you can actually look at for example your models your GUIs okay so let's take a look at the importance of sealing our map this is a very important concept in Doom 3 and it really does uh, justify a little section here on it so what we're going to do is we're going to load up our map that we built last time and that was just map 1 so let's open that up now before I get started here there's one little command in the XYZ Z window that I forgot to mention in the first part, and that's how to zoom in and out. Real simple, just the mouse wheel. So if we uh, if we just move that mouse wheel, we can see that we're zooming in and out. So here's our map that we built in the last video, but you'll see that there's a little addition that I did. I added a couple little brushes here. I'll explain why I did that a little bit later in our texture uh, part. So just stick with me. It's nothing major. I'll explain that in a bit. So here we are in our map. Now, what you have to think of is your Doom 3 maps, they're kind of like, easiest way to think about it is like a submarine or a spaceship. That is, we have to have a sealed room. 
And of course, if you have a hole in your walls, you're going to leak, right? Um, so in the case of a spaceship, air is going to get out, or in the case of a submarine, water is going to get in. I mean, they're colorful examples, but I think it kind of makes sense. So we have to make sure that our walls are sealed. And if we look at our XY window, you can see how I butted the, the, the two brushes here together. And basically, I've got a sealed room. And this is very important because if we go to uh, compile our maps and we have a hole in our map, we're going to get an error. So let's illustrate that for a moment. Let's take this brush here at the end. And let's move it up a couple of uh, units here so we can see we have a hole, right? So if this was a submarine, obviously the water would come rushing in here. So we built our map, we go to uh, compile it, we go to BSP, and we look at our console, and we've got the dreaded leaked error here. So it's not going to compile. Now, it's not a big deal when you have a simple map because, I mean, visually we can just see we have a hole here, right? Uh, but if you're working on a huge map and maybe you have just one unit that's, that's, that's a hole here, you got stuff in front of it, it's very, very hard to find. So obviously uh, the id developers came across that problem when they were building um, their, uh, their game. So they gave us a little tool here. If we go up into file and we look at point file, if we run that, click on that, what it's going to do is it's going to draw this red line. And normally it draws it from an entity and then it points to where the hole in the map is is and we can see it's telling us it's right there and our XYZ window you know we can see it here too it's drawing it from the info player start and it's showing us that right here is a leak so that's easy enough to repair we can obviously see what the problem is so we can select that brush and we can drag it down here and now we're sealed and then you're probably saying, but Tom, there's an ugly red line. It's okay. Once we recompile that BSP, the red line disappears. We look at our console. We have no errors. So we're good to go. Fantastic. So that basically covers sealing maps. Now, it's a, you know, it doesn't take long to explain it, but it's just super important. Very frustrating when you build a map and you try to compile it and you get this leak errors. What's going on? So just jump into that point file, find that leak, fix it and recompile your map and you're good to go and uh, well we won't run it because take my word for it it's all sealed up and ready to go we don't have any errors so that covers that topic so let's go back in here oh and then one thing i did want to mention like okay so when you edit in doom 3 i know this sounds obvious but it's very important play the game first. You can't design levels unless you know the game. You have to understand the characters, the mechanics. Also, when you play the game, I mean, you run through it, you see textures that you like, you see little sequences that you like, things you can replicate in your map. So always get to know the game. You know, the tendency is if someone buys Doom 3 just for the editor, you kind of bypass the game, you jump in the editor, all this stuff is going to be a mystery to you. If you play the game first, you're going to understand all the components, and that's the way to become a good level designer. Know the game through and through in fact, if you know it really well, you'll become a best, uh, better level uh, designer. So that's my first little point of advice with respect to uh, kind of approaching level design. So let's jump out of here, and the next thing we're going to look at is how to arm the player at runtime. Okay, so let's take a look at how to arm up our player. Now, the easiest way to do that is simply by putting in an info player start. He does start uh, in the default with a pistol and a few bullets. Uh, basically, that's just the way the entity is set up. So as we had done in our first map, we put our info player start, and we could see it here. There's our info player start. So if we run the map, F2, and we go map, M1, and we're in the map. We can see at runtime the player spawns in with his fists and he's also got a pistol. Not very much ammunition, just 36, but he does have some ammunition. All right, so let's just go out of here, quit, and go back into the editor. So the easiest way to give him some weapons, oh, and by the way, you can start the game with the player uh, having no weapons at all, but that involves setting up a trigger and an entity called target remove weapons. I don't want to get into triggers quite yet. We'll get, the, uh, we'll get into that when we talk about triggers, and I'll show you how to remove those weapons. But for now, let's just go with what we have. Now, the second way to give the player some additional weapons, like let's say at runtime, we want him to have something a little bit more fancy. Uh, so let's just go into our XYZ uh, view here. Here. And what I like to do is I like to just select the floor because I'm going to just put them on the floor. And just by selecting on the floor, when I put the entities in, they should kind of be on the same plane as the floor. So let's deselect our floor. Let's go to the top view. We're going to right mouse click and we're going to go down here to weapons. And this is all alphabetical order. So we know we have to scroll down. We get to weapons. 
And in here, let's just maybe start him off with a chainsaw. And I have to be careful when you select the weapons, just choose this line, just says weapon chainsaw. Don't choose underscore MP, that's multiplayer. I actually don't think that works unless we set it up as a multiplayer. But for now, let's be safe and put in a chainsaw. So there's our chainsaw. Let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, and one thing we do want to check is, let's go to side view and just make sure that it's not colliding in a brush. And we can see here that it's inside a brush. So let's lift it up and uh, just make sure that the origin, which is that little red dot, it's kind of hard to see, but let's see if we can find it. Yeah, that little red dot, that's the model's origin. Let's just, or the entity's origin. Let's make sure that that's touching the floor. Now let's say we want that chainsaw to be facing a little bit differently here. So we could just select that. Let's go into our entity window here, and then we can kind of use these buttons to make it face a different way. I kind of like it facing that way, so let's do that. If we go for our top view, uh, we can see that by clicking this, it does change its orientation, but let's make it face that way. So, and you can, I just putting it on the floor, but you can put it up on a table, on a box, inside one of those locking cabinets, which we'll look at later, but for now, let's just put it on the floor. And why don't we go ahead and give him a plasma gun here as well. So we'll go down to weapons. Let's find the plasma gun. We'll put that there too. Uh, again, let's make sure it's not on the floor. I like to put it on the floor, so let's shift it down. And let's get it to face the right way here. 90. Okay, there we are. So that's the easiest way to put in a couple of different weapons. So let's just go ahead and save that. Getting that bloody error again. We'll talk about that error in a minute, but don't worry about it. It's just garbage. Let's compile that. And then let's go into the map. Let's bring up our, our um, console. We'll find map one, hit enter. And if we go into it, we should have a couple of weapons sitting there. And he can just go ahead and pick them up. And then now he's got his weapons. Plasma gun, there it is. Okay, so that's that. Let's get out of here. And let's look at method number two. Now, certain entities in the game do drop weapons when they're killed. I'm not going to give you an exhaustive list, but let's have a look at how that mechanic works. So let's go into our XYZ window. Uh, let's right click and let's go down to, let's see here, monsters. And let's find this Z-Tech guys. And we want to find the pistol guy. So let's just see if we can't find him real quick. Okay, here he is. So we'll just go with the monster underscore z sec underscore pistol. Select him and let's put him in the map. And we can see him there. So let's just go to the side view, make sure he's even with the floor. And we're going to put him facing away from us just so when we spawn in, he doesn't start shooting us right away. Now you kind of notice when the model gets put in, it doesn't have the head. I'm not sure exactly the technical issue of that but just be aware he doesn't have a head in the preview window okay so we've got him in we really don't need to do anything else so let's go ahead and save that let's go ahead and compile it and let's go into the map f2 bring up our command line let's bring up our load map one okay there he is now he doesn't know we're here so let's stealthily walk over here grab our chainsaw let's grab our plasma gun and let's shoot him and watch, he does this kind of funky animation. Well, is he going to do it for us? Well, maybe not. But anyway, so if we shoot him and he dies, we can see he drops his pistol. And that's another way you can give the player uh, um, some weapons. So if we just go over that, we got the pistol. You don't get much ammunition with it, but, you know, there it is. Now, our screen is kind of cut off because we're in window mode, but if we play that in full screen, we get that whole display at the bottom there fully. Okay, so that's uh, the third way, I guess. So just the player spawn one way. The second way is put it on the floor or in the map, which we already picked it up. Third way, put in an enemy. And let's look at the fourth way. And this, this one's kind of cool. So... <sighs> What we want to do here is we want to go off the map because we don't want the player to see this. And uh, by the way, I should be going to my proper grid size here, 16, thank you. Uh, okay, so the first thing we're going to put down is something called a trigger relay. So we're just going to click outside the map and we're going to go down here just so it doesn't overlap in our views. Whoops. And we're going to right mouse click and we're going to look for a trigger. And we're going to look for trigger relay, and we're going to put that down here. And let's just zoom in a little bit, trigger relay. And let's go into our edit, uh, entity um, examination here, our little window here. And what we're going to do is we're going to rename this trigger relay. And this is very important. I think there's something hard-coded in here that when we do change the name to what I'm going to show you in a minute, it just automatically works at runtime. So what we're going to do and how we change its name is we go into the key value down here, and we just delete this, and we go name.
and we hit tab and then in here we type in dev map and hit enter and now we can see that that entity here is renamed dev map so that's the first thing we want to do and I just want to go to my other views here to make sure I'm outside the map which I am okay perfect so let's go to our top view now once we have this trigger relay renamed to dev map sorry select a shift grab okay there we are we want to put in whatever weapons we're going to give them. So let's right mouse click. We're going to go down a weapon here. And I think we're going to give them a shotgun. Again, make sure it's not shotgun underscore MP. So we'll give them a shotgun. And we'll put that shotgun close to that, uh, that uh, trigger relay entity. And let's just see the positioning. That's all fine. Maybe put it on the same level. Okay, we're good there. Okay, and then let's put in another weapon. I don't know what we're going to put in here. Maybe a rocket launcher might be nice. So make sure it's not underscore MP. There's a rocket launcher. Let's put it close to the entity. There we are. Okay, good. Now, what we have to do is we, if we want the trigger relay or the dev map trigger relay here to control that, we have to connect these two entities. And there's a couple of different ways we can do it. If we select dev map, the entity, we can do it one way and do it manually. So, and we can see here, it gives us some idea of how to do it. Now, does it show us what we need here? Okay, it doesn't. But take my word for it. So what we want to do is when we have that trigger relay selected, in the key uh, line here, we want to type target, tab. And then what we want to do is we want to tell it to grab this weapon shotgun. Now, we could have renamed that weapon shotgun to something a bit easier. But uh, we can just follow the naming convention here. So it just says weapon underscore shotgun one. So we have to type that in exactly right. So we're going to go weapon underscore shotgun underscore one. And we're going to hit enter. Now what we want to look for here is this little line that connects the two. And also pay attention to the arrow. This is basically telling us that this uh, entity here, which is that trigger relay, is controlling or connected to the shotgun one. It's very important. Now if you do this step and you don't see this path, is what we call, go up here into view and show. And just make sure that this path right here is selected. See if we unselect it, we don't see the path. And it gets a bit confusing. Like it's there but why isn't it showing? So let's go up to again view, show, and go down to path just so we can see that path. So that's one way we can kind of connect those two entities. Now the other way we can connect the two entities is we can first uh, select, very important in the sequence here, first select the, tr the trigger relay that we want to control something. So we're going to select that first, then we're going to select what we want it to control. So we're going to next uh, click on that weapon launcher one, and we're going to do it that way. Now what we can do is we can go up here to the selection and we can look at this connect entities and we can see the short uh, sorry the hotkey is control K but we can connect it that way as well but a bing and then we can see it's connected that just saves us a little bit of a typing that is by far the easiest way to do it um, now when we just put in the weapons like this he doesn't get very many bullets or well in this case shells so what we're gonna do is let's give him a few shells so let's just go here into um, sorry right click and then we're gonna scroll up to ammo Okay, so here's ammo, and we're just going to give him some shells, and we'll just, uh, let's see here, ammo clip, 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 uh, where are we here, shells, yeah, we'll go with, uh, yeah, we'll go with, uh, we'll go with large, why not, let's put that in there as well, and then again, we want to connect those two, so let's click on the trigger relay, click on the shells, and we're going to hit control K, and that'll uh, connect those two. Okay, now one other thing we have to do, and this goes back into uh, leaking, is that all entities have to be sealed within the map. And as we can see, we got these things floating here, out here, without uh, any sort of walls around it. And if we compile this, it's going to give us errors. So we have to draw uh, some no, uh, well, I like to, as I say, I like to do the caulking brushes around this. So let's do that real quick. Uh, let's just go into our textures folder and just select our cock so we have it and let's put some brushes in here just to seal this up so let's do this real quick okay we'll just draw some quick brushes here let's make sure that we fit everything inside there we are okay we're good let's clone that let's come down here let's say let's draw some more walls here to seal it there we go let's make sure we're good we are clone put that there and then finally let's draw some more brushes to that to here I'll show you what I'm doing just in a second this will make sense okay and let's clone that and put it here 
Okay, so if we go over here in our render window out to what we just built, we can see we have a solid box here. And inside, if we just connect, or sorry, click that brush, and if we hit H, we can hide that. And if we look inside, we've got our entities in there. And actually, this is quite handy with respect to all these hiding brushes. So let's just bring that back. Yeah, let's just bring that back. How do we bring that back? Shift H. Okay, there we go. So if we click on a brush and we've got it highlighted and we just hit H, it hides that brush. If we hit uh, Shift H, it brings it back. Now if we click that brush, another thing we can do is Control Shift H and this is going to hide everything except what's selected. Uh, not super important right now, but we'll get into that later. But those little keys in terms of hide and that are very handy. And you can also come up here for view and you can go hide show and then here it is here. Hide selected, hide not selected, show hidden. So that's a, kind of a handy thing. So let's just show everything. Whoops. Let's just go back and show everything. There we are. Okay, so we've got this set up. It's sealed. It's good. Let's save it. Oh, that, that, that error is really getting on my nerves. See, I went in here real quick, and I had a look at project settings, and I tried to save the path of where the maps are to D, and still not fixing that. If anybody knows why that error is, it's annoying. It doesn't really hurt us, but it's annoying. But if anybody knows how to solve that, I'd be loving you. Okay, so we save this. Let's compile it. We don't have any errors. We're good. So let's go into the map, F2, bring up our command line, and let's just load our map. Okay, and now we can see that on spawn we've got our rocket launcher and we also have our shotgun. So that's another way we can do it. And again, we can just pick them up, entities that we placed, we can nail this guy, and then we can also grab it there. So that's four ways you can put uh, weapons into the map. And now again, there is a way you can spawn the player without any weapons. It does involve a trigger and another entity. I'm not going to show that today because, again, we don't want to get into triggers. So let's go back to our map, and then let's look at our finer sequence, and we're going to look a little bit about texturing. So just give me a moment, and we'll do that right now. Whoops. Quit. All right, so let's talk a little bit about textures in Doom 3. Uh, now, that's a rather expansive topic, and we're just going to scratch the surface today because we just want to get some fundamentals down. And as I indicated earlier on the video, I did add a couple of little brushes into the map that I showed uh, did, did off camera. And I just want to explain those a little bit. Now, as you saw in the first video, that to apply a texture, we usually, if we don't have anything already on the map, we have to go into this media folder, this texture, and then we have to look through these files, and there's a lot of textures in here, and as you saw me kind of fumbling around to try and find one, it's a rather clunky. Now, if we've already got textures in a map, what the Doom 3 editor does in this window is it just puts up a list of just the uh, textures that we already have in our level. So I loaded a couple of um, little brushes, and I put in a couple of uh, textures here just for ease so I don't have to fish around for them in that uh, big huge long uh, file list here in the media uh, tab. Now also be aware that some of the textures don't seal so in other words you know if you build a perfectly sealed map when you go to compile it and you're getting leak errors and everything is sealed up and you don't know what's going on it's like because a texture you've selected does not seal. This is why I use the cock texture because I know it does seal and also uh, the engine doesn't render it. So you get sort of the sealing action without having to actually render a texture. So that's kind of the way I work and I would recommend that that's probably a decent way to work. So let's have a little bit closer look at these two brushes that I added in here. So let's hit shift and select them left mouse button. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hit a key of, uh, what are we going to hit a key of? Shift H. Control Shift H, and that hides basically everything we don't have selected. Uh, again, I'm getting a little bit uh, familiar with the hotkeys, so just bear with me. It's been a while since I've been in the editor. You can also get that function through View. If you go uh, down here to Hide Show, there it is. Hide Selected H, Hide Not Selected, Shift Control H, and then Show Everything is Shift H. Okay, so let's have a look at these little brushes that I put in here. So let's just fly over here. Uh, let's just fly over here. Whoops, please select that. And oh, where are we here? There we are. Okay, so let's have a look at this little brush. So first thing we see if in our XYZ window is that I talked a lot about drawing brushes uh, in sizes that are friendly to the texture. So if we actually select that, we can see that this brush size is 64 by 64. Now most of the um, texture 
characters in Doom 3 are kind of factors of 64. It's just the way the artists have built them, usually 64 by 64 pixels. And as long as we keep our brushes and factors of that, we know that they're going to fit on our brushes. Now, you'll see another brush here that was shown in a minute is actually 128 by 128, but again, it's a factor of 64, right? It's just doubled. Now, in the first video, you noticed that I was kind of fumbling around with trying to texture the, uh, the my brush, and that's because the way I texture my brush is a little bit more nuanced than normal. You'll notice that this is a, just a primitive polygon, six faces, and I put caulking on all the surfaces except the texture that's actually exposed in the game. Now there's some controversy to this. If we load up um, one of the original Doom maps that id designed, you'll find that they do not texture their brushes this way. What they do is they just put the texture on all six sides. Now I'm a bit of an optimization hound. I like to try and squeeze all the, all the optimization out of my maps just to cut down on load times and rendering times and this, that, and the other thing. So I like to just put a texture on one face. And uh, so if we select this brush and then we go to our media, uh, sorry, our texture tab and we hit caulk, now we've got the caulking on all six sides. Now what I like to do is just select one side of that brush. And how you do that is shift control and left mouse button. It might be hard to see in the render window, but the face I have selected is uh, selected. It's a little bit more red than the other faces. So I just like to click the face that I'm working on and then we can put the texture on there by clicking there. Now we can actually manipulate that texture. So let's uh, just select that face. And if we hit the S key, we bring up this uh, texture, or sorry, surface inspector. And we can do various things to this texture. We can rotate it, we can scale it up here, uh, we can move it over. Uh, if we get kind of messed up and, you know, it's all uh, sized differently and stuff like that, we can just hit natural and it'll bring it back to its natural state, like so. Uh, this fit and cap are more for um, texturing patches, so we won't really touch those. But, um, you know, shifting horizontally, for example, if we want to just shift it over, if we click this way, it just basically shifts it left to right. So it's showing the edge of it in the render window right in the middle. Now, if we don't draw our brush sizes, we run the danger of sort of wonky things like that with the edges not fitting properly. So I don't like that and I always try to draw my brushes and factors of 64 uh, or 128 to fit. We'll, we'll see that a little bit more as we go here. So let's bring that back to natural. Uh, let's click OK and let's take that off. Okay and if we look at this other brush we can see that this one, the size of it, uh, let's see here, is 128 by 128. So again, a factor of a 64. So you want to keep that. Um, now, I'm going to try to explain that a little bit better here. So let's uh, bring up our map here. So for example, if we look at this brush here, Now actually, let me just jump back. When I drew it, I was when I originally drew the map, I went on and on raving about best practices. And you can see in this edge, I've got them butted like this, and that's the correct way. But you actually notice here, I did it incorrectly. Now, why we want to do it like this, as opposed to like this, is that this surface here, our texture is going to fit on this surface. And if it's going to take up that entire space, if it's got an edge on it, if it's hidden here, it's not going to fit properly. So actually the way we should have done this is we should have selected this wall here and we should have moved it out here. And then now it should be correct. Now I think we've got a hole in our floor, which we want to just do that. Oh, and our ceiling we've got a hole in as well. Okay, we want to shift that there. Okay, now we're properly sealed. And now you can see that the edge of this comes right out to the end. Now we're still not quite right because we're not on a grid line, but more or less this is correct. Okay, so confusing as hell, but I'll show you what I mean here real quick. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this bloody floor texture because it's just killing my eyes. So we're going to select that top surface, shift, uh, sorry, shift control, left mouse button, and we're going to just apply that floor texture on there, bada bing. Now because we're a good size, it should fit on the edges. Let's see if I could illustrate that. You can see that the edge fits properly here. If this was pushed in a little bit, it would be cut off. Now it might not be super uh, obvious and for most mapping it's not a big deal, but really we want to get up on the right foot here and we want to just do this properly. So I want to make sure that this floor is the proper grid and you see it's fitting in all edges nicely there and over here hopefully if everything goes right. Okay, you can see it's not correct. That's because we're not on that grid line. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this floor. Let's deselect that. Select this floor and we're going to move it in here. 
Okay, there it is on the edge. Perfect. Now we just have to adjust our other brushes. So let's do that real quick. We'll take this guy, put it there. Take this guy, put it there. And then we'll take our end wall and shift them over. And let's just make sure it was sealed here. It looks good. Okay, we still haven't got best practices on our ceiling, so let's go there. Okay, now we've got all our butt joints properly. So it's probably a little bit confusing, but again, get in the editor, try this stuff, and you'll kind of see what I'm getting at here. But these are best practices. As long as you fit these textures along these major grid lines, you should be good. And if we look, you know, we select this floor, we can see that our brush size 10, 24 by 5, 12. Again, factors of 64, uh, so we're good. So it's, it's kind of like, you know... I said 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Uh, uh, that's not actually not correct. Uh, so it should be 64, 128, uh, 256, 5, 12, 10, 24, those sort of factors. And then this works correctly. So that's very important. And then we can do the same thing on our wall here. Let's select that brush, just that surface. And let's put in that. That's just a little bit more attractive. And if we did it right, you'll see it goes right to the edge. And we actually didn't do this right on the ceiling. And let's have a look at what I'm getting at. See how that's not correct? It should be down a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this brush here. And let's move it down there. That's the way it should be. And then it's, it's encompassing the entire texture. Is that the way it should be? Hang on. Actually, I think we're good. No, that's the way it's supposed to be. You can see the texture here it runs up against to there. So that's actually good. And if we actually look at our size of our brush, we can see, oh, well, you know, that might not be right either. Okay, I think you know what I'm getting at here, though. This should be going to just under here. Well, let's see. Okay, so it should be going to there. And it does go there. So that looks like it's proper. It might not be perfect, but I think you're, you see what I'm getting at. So let's select that surface as well. Let's put that texture on there. Let's select that surface there, put texture on there. Now another way we can do this, which is a little quicker, and this is where I was fumbling around. We're going to tell the editor that we want this surface here, so control shift and left mouse, and we want this texture to be affected, and what we want to put here is this one. So we just middle mouse click and it should apply it there, and it has. We're not going to worry about the ceiling too much. Okay, so let's save that. Let's BSP it. Now, if I'm making little mistakes here, guys, just bear with me. I mean, I'm dealing with the editor, with the microphone on my face here, trying to kind of have narration and everything else. I hate making excuses, but if I'm a little rough around the edges, I hope you understand. Um, it is a learning process, and I think we're all going to learn here. So did we save it? Uh, so we'll just go up to save real quick, or Control-S. Let's BSP it, compile it. There we are. Let's go into the map, F2, hit our title key. Ooh, we're really glitching out here. What is going on here? So we're glitching, guys. Okay, we're back here. I just left the glitch in. I could have edited it out. I just wanted to show you that it's no big thing. Sometimes Doom 3 glitches, sometimes Windows 10 glitches. No need to panic. I just went to Task Manager. I shut down the process, reloaded it, and it's all fine. So let's just pick it up real quick. We're just going to load that map. Uh, so what do we got it here? Map, M1, Enter. And if everything goes well, come on. There we go. We've got all our new textures put in place. So that'll cover it for this video. It's part two. Again, we kind of flew over it. Uh, as we progress through this um, entire process, we will go into everything else in more detail. But I'm just trying to get us off on the right foot here. So I'm going to leave it here. As always, thanks for watching. Please drop us a subscribe. It really does help. Or throw in something in the comments if you have questions, if you want me to demonstrate something, if you have a little bit of input. Uh, please just drop us a comment. It'd be great. Give us a like or dislike. That's great too. Again, if you want to see more of my videos, go to the channel. It's Tom's World. And for now, I'd like to thank you again. Stay well and all the best. Woo!